Hello everybody! I had the opportunity to go to the Standing Stone Games offices and talk to some of the awesome staff that work there about the new Sharn expansion and some other cool stuff. It was kind of a last minute thing, so this is uh, more of a for fun, but it's, it's, it's going to be a good time. So I had the opportunity to be joined by Quentin or Linabel on the forum. Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm a system designer on, uh, on DDO. Bob, no Bob Hess. How you doing? Steve, Steel Star Rogers. Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? And Rob Severlin Ciccolini. I'm doing great. How are you? So what I asked what first was, what are your top three favorite classes in Dungeons & Dragons Online? Followed by, what are your top three favorite classes in pen and paper? And how are they different? Ooh, top three classes. Um, I'm partial artificer. I've never been... Uh quiet about that <laughs> do you mean in terms of what i enjoy oh geez i mean obviously rogue is number one uh the most fun per life i've ever had was uh, all, honestly all of my assassin lives um and like rogue my favorite build right now is a uh, fighter vanguard favorite soul my war domain cleric Vistani. Oh. Bard. Um, I did all the bard work in December. Um, let me think for a hot second. I went with uh, Vol mm -hmm. to get the dagger synergy, and um, having decent DPS in a full casting is yeah. pretty good. Wizard. Um, you know, their trees are a little bit out of date, but I've always kind of been partial to in pace spellcasters in general. Like wizard, like pure wizard. Wolf Druid. Wolf Druid is incredibly fun to play. Like the moment to moment gameplay, I think it's got a lot of the best options that we have in any of our classes. Various dual weapon builds that I've been playing around with. Usually some combo of ranger or rogue, so when I'm soloing I can get those traps. In old school, they used to call it, like, the Batman build. Beyond that, I really gotta say favorite souls. I just really like the kind of divine... Uh, striker kind of archetype. So weirdly enough, in 5e D Dungeons and Dragons, I have only ever played a rogue over the course of like four different campaigns. For my top three pen and paper classes, I would probably uh, do a little bit more spellcasting classes. Spellcasting uh, in the games and the way that you affect and interact with environments are completely different than it can be in a video game, and so you have a lot more control. Um, I like melee. In pen and paper. My namesake, Severlin, is the character, my oldest character that I started in 79. He's a barbarian fighter hybrid that fights dual wield. So why exactly can we play as Typhlings now, and where do they come from? So, funnily enough, it's kind of the same that gnomes ended up in both Forgotten Realms and in, and in Stormreach. Fifth edition, general feeling is just about every race fits into just about every setting somewhere. As people go to Sharn, they're much more common there. Story is that it opens both ways. Mm -hmm. With the player's movement to Sharn, Sharn has extra interest in Stormreach, and so characters move back and forth. Maybe it's a time that a couple more are coming over to check it out. C come, spend some time in the streets, hang out, see what people are doing, types of adventures they're getting up to. Sharn is where actual civilized people live and you know have jobs, and Stormreach is more just hanging around and stabbing people. Yeah. And just like every other race, um, they got on a boat and the boat got hit by a big dragon. When will we see Typhlings, and maybe even Azimars or Dragonborn, in town as NPC characters? You know, chatting up with their buddies, hanging out, being shopkeepers and the like. Is that possible, or is that something we're going to explore in the future? Well, I mean, there's two, there's two main ways I can answer that question. Um, the first one is that... Technically speaking, avatars in DDO, things that are weighted as avatars that players can pilot around like as their player, have a tremendous amount of weight on them um, for, for, for scripting and how they interact with inventory. An avatar NPC actually causes load on the server, and having too many of them in an instance is actually detrimental to the performance of the game. So we're very wary about putting them on. It, it depends on when or if we end up with a cleaner NPC version of the avatar rig. The Typhling Iconic could have gone in a lot of different directions. Some people think Sorcerer, others think Warlock, heck, I even think Fighter, personally. What was the decision process like when you guys decided, no, we're going to stick with Bard instead? And how did that idea evolve over time? So so we knew when we started putting the, the base race together that they were going to make very good Sorcerers, they were going to make very good Warlocks. First thing that we want to look at is, are there any... Uh, normal free-to-play basic classes that we haven't actually touched or haven't had an ability to uh, build the character out of. Um, Gnome and Deepa Gnome have very similar designs, and unfortunately it ended up that Gnome makes a good illusionist and, and quite a good spellcaster, and Deep Gnome makes a better one. When it came to the iconic, we didn't just want to create an iconic that did the same thing the base race did, but better. 
uh, which kind of led us to Bard. We didn't have a Bard iconic yet, yeah. and we kind of came to this idea of, you know, kind of a very uh, scoundrel-like uh, bard that plays a fiddle instead of uh, a lute and, you know, kind of gets into trouble in, in, in the city. I mean, we could have done a fighter, but we have Purple Dragon Knight already. We were going to go Sorcerer, but the idea of having swashbuckling scoundrel bard... Sorcerer would have been really cool, but there's also a couple of different bits which are, as a part of the base class, which are sort of Sorcerer aligned, and so it just seemed weird to go Sorcerer on Sorcerer on Sorcerer. Um, and so instead, we kind of thought that it'd be a little more fun to go scoundrel. What Sharn feature are you most excited for the players to get their hands on? Oh, okay. Uh, people exploring the city of Sharn for the most part. We teased a little bit of one of our capstone dungeons, mm. where you get to experience that iconic picture of people on the sky sh- on the sky ships, yeah. the little sky sleds. I think that that's going to be really cool. Inquisitive. Inquisitive, 100%. And I like a lot of the themes that we're exploring in it. I like that it's a little more noir and a little more tough streets, and the characters kind of get put into uh, a much more, like, morally gray area and things of that sort. And I think that later today, I, uh, the animations for, like, firing the two crossbows is going to be really cool for them. Does that include the stuff we just put down in the pre-purchase? Because, boy, I'm really looking forward to, to rolling around with dual crossbows. <laughs> I think that some of that's a little more compelling. Um, I like that we can pull on themes such as investigation and stuff like that, that while we do a little bit of that, we could really make that a little more of a, a specific theme as we go forward. Exploring the cogs and, and, and sort of finding all of the explorer dungeons is going to be very cool. Um, the raid looks super awesome in terms of that, uh, but I don't want to spoil too much for the people who haven't um, who haven't uh, seen anything with that. So there's a, there's a lot of, of great stuff in terms of in terms of that. Also, finding artifacts will hopefully be very cool for them. And my last question of the day, what is your Inquisitive build? Pure favorite soul, um, and you have crossbows, and you make them your favorite weapon, and you use wisdom to hit and damage. Um, And I'm not quite sure if I want to put points in bird, but you put points in war soul, um, and you cast cool spells, and you pew, pew, pew. I'm tempted to try... I mean, Deepwood Stalker, Inquisitive, um, might be a good combo. Might not be great, but I think I might do 14 Rogue, 6 Ranger. May not be like the most optimized endgame build and everything like that, but I think it'll have a decent amount of flexibility. I think it'll be fun. The one I played in several of the play days of uh, Sharn content so far has been uh, Pure Favorite Soul, War Soul. You know, going uh, up to Tier 5 in Inquisitive, so you're getting that uh, No Holds Barred, Fusillade-like equivalent where you fight, you know, you can activate it, and then you're rolling no reload on two crossbows at a time, combined with the thing in Tier 4 that lets those crossbows act as favored weapons. Yeah. means you can go all the way up the War Soul tree, get the bonuses in that tree to favored weapons, use their activated attacks that do things like heal you on hit, and you're shooting twice, so you're getting that twice... Um, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, there's some cool synergies there that I really like. They, they, Inquisitive turned out to have cool synergies for, like, quite a number of DDoS classes. I'm really interested to see, you know, now that it's out of our hands and into players' hands, what kind of cool stuff people are going to come up with. Um, and mostly it's it's probably going to end up being um, a, a pretty high-tier healer with you can shoot crossbows as, as a, you know, on the off chance you need to. Um, because I, <laughs> the last time I played a favorite soul was, it was my third life ever, and I'm on life, like, 58 at this point. Um, like, I have one favorite soul life, and I'm, like, closing it on triple all. Like, I've just never played the class. Um, so, you know, I want to get around to playing Beacon of Hope eventually. So definitely Inquisitive. Shorter answer is Inquisitive. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you learned a little bit about the expansion, about uh, some of the cool things these guys are excited about, and uh, are ready for the new expansion that is coming out very, very shortly. First, I just want to say thank you to Standing Stone Games for giving me the chance to go to their offices and record in their studios and get to hang out with them all day. It was super cool. It was an amazing experience, and uh, I'm really looking forward to potentially doing more stuff like that in the future, and maybe some more collaborations. Now, I know that this wasn't like a super formal, you know, really grilling interview, which I know a lot of you would expect from me, but 
uh, it was kind of short notice and I was mostly just having fun and it was just a good time for me. If you would like to purchase the Sharn expansion, there's going to be a link in the description below the video so you can check that out for show sure and get yourself some cool Typhling inquisitive action and play inquisitive like all the other cool kids. Anyway, for more sweet DDO content, this is Shrimp Tom. I'm out. That was bad. That was bad. <clears throat> just buy Sharn. Buy Sharn. Do it. Buy Sharn. Also, thank you for watching.